Let me read to you a passage from the ninth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 46 to 50. It's the Gospel for Monday of the 26th week in ordinary time. St. Luke writes, An argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and made him stand beside him. Then he said to them, Whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For he who is least among you all, he is the greatest. Master, said John, we saw a man driving our demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he is not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for whoever is not against you is for you. That's from Luke chapter 9, verse 46 to 50. We are reminded of humility. You know, the expression, the top dog, is one that is commonly used. I remember a situation in a room where there were two dogs, one of the dogs being a visitor. The visiting dog was patted and made a fuss of, while the dog that lived at the house was, for that short period, taken for granted and not given much attention. Then suddenly, the dog that lived there attacked the visiting dog. The reason was that the visiting dog was appearing to be the top dog, and the other dog could not bear it. Of course, this is common among animals, especially males. One desires to be the top animal, the top animal in the herd or group, and will fight for that position until overcome by a stronger one. The drive for supremacy over others of one's kind is a curious phenomenon among many classes of conscious beings, conscious things, and can be regarded as having many functions. That is to say, it can be seen to serve various purposes of benefit to the kind. Still, the drive of a dog to be the top dog when, objectively speaking, that dog, the top dog, is not the best dog of all, would seem to be some kind of disorder, though it is prevalent in the animal kingdom. The yearning to be supreme over others, when those others are very often equal or even superior, would seem to be a symptom of a disorder connected with the constitution of the universe. There is something awry. Not too much can be nor need be made of this until we turn to mankind, and then the disorder becomes serious indeed. All through history, man has shown himself to be driven by the desire to be, let us put it, the top dog. Unless he has learned to discipline himself severely, or has learned to do so from the lesson of hard knocks, Man shows himself to be intent on gaining position and supremacy over others, whether he is worthy of it or not. In fact, he is prepared to kill in order to make this happen. Were it not for the imposition of the rule of law, it would be, as we say, the law of the jungle that would prevail, the very pattern just discussed that we see among animals. As a matter of fact, this made its appearance at the dawn of human history, when the first man and woman fell. God declared to Eve that your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall lord it over you. Genesis chapter 3 verse 16. Then the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, and Cain, we read, was very angry, and his countenance fell. He rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Chapter 4, verse 5 to 8. Cain could not bear not being the top dog, so he killed his brother. Manifestly, this is not how it should be. Ordinary human reflection can see that while the desire to compete and excel can be wholesome and of service to man, the desire for supremacy, come what may, is a disorder. At the beginning of human history, this was the temptation which the serpent set for the woman. You shall not die, the serpent said to her, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. 
which is to say, being able to determine for yourself what is good and evil. So the woman was tempted to be the top dog. The prospect pleased her. And we read, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened. Genesis chapter 3 verse 4 to 7. This set the scene for world history, in which flourished so much lust for power and defiance of God and man. Now let us ask this. If man is like this, what can be said of God? As a matter of fact, we know that God, what God is like, and he is not like this. God, the creator and Lord of all, revealed himself to his chosen people and finally revealed himself definitively in his divine son, Jesus Christ. Christ said, come to me and learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart. That is what God, the creator, is like. Whatever we may observe of the many disorders that have appeared in his creation and especially in the life of man. God became man to set things right and one of the things he intended to set right was pride. St. Paul writes of Jesus Christ that though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, as did Eve, we might observe, but emptied himself taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. God unhesitatingly chooses to take the lower place and even lower still. The traditional view of the Incarnation is that it was a divine step to remedy sin. But there is another view proposed by, for instance, blessed John Duns Scotus. It is that God intended the incarnation from the beginning, prior to man's sin. That is, he yearned and intended to take the lowly place among those made in his image and as one who shares their human nature with him. At the Last Supper, he revealed himself as one who washes the feet of his creatures whom he calls to his friendship and his service. All of this brings us to our gospel that I read earlier from Luke chapter 9, verse 46 to 50. Our Lord tells his disciples that whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For he who is least among you all, he is the greatest. There is no place among Christ's disciples for wanting to be the top dog. Let us take to heart what St. Paul says. Be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 to 2.